place at T-Mobile Arena, and we are live tonight from just up the road, about a half mile away at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, with another premium matchup coming your way. This one in the 130-pound division as Vasily Lomachenko and Nicholas Walters stand by for their long-awaited and highly anticipated showdown. Now, quickly, before we talk to both of our expert commentators, let's take a look at some CompuBox numbers, which illuminate just a little bit of what went on between Ward and Kovalev. A story of two fights during the first six rounds. Kovalev outlanding Ward an average of nine to six per round, outthrowing Ward by 14 punches per round, a slightly lower connect percentage, but obviously considerably more powerful punches for Kovalev, the Russian slugger, during that period of time. Then, from the seventh through the twelfth round, the pace changed just slightly. Both fighters throwing a little more, Kovalev landing slightly fewer than Ward down the stretch of the fight. Ward landing at a higher connect percentage, bolstered by the greater accuracy of body punches. And all of those rounds were, with one exception, scored for Ward by the judges. But here's a question. How could all three judges have given the 10th round to Ward when Kovalev was so dominant in CompuBox numbers, throwing and landing more punches than Andre Ward in the 10th round. That was one question in the minds of those who disputed the official decision. So now let's turn to HBO boxing analyst Max Kellerman. Max, you've had a week now to reconsider both the decision and the scoring, the judging that led to the decision. What are your thoughts? Well, when we watched it live, given my points of divergence in terms of rounds with Harold Letterman's scorecard, I remember thinking Andre Ward may have won this 114-113. Possible range of scores from there to 115-112 Kovalev. Having rewatched the fight and scored it this time, after all, Jim and I and Roy were sitting ringside calling the fight, not watching it in, in order to score it the way Harold Letterman is doing. When I sat down and scored it, my scorecard came out 114 113 Kovalev, which given the possible range of scores, I thought was about right. I still don't think it's impossible to have that fight 114 113 Ward. I think that is a possible scorecard, if unlikely, for all three judges. All right, so controversial, but not out of range. Meanwhile, Roy Jones, one thing that fascinated me was the near unanimity with which so many writers who commented on the fight and on the decision may have said, well, I think Kovalev won, but we know who wins the rematch because once Ward gets a chance to look at you like that for 12 rounds, you are toast. Almost everybody seemed to believe that Ward is a logical heavy favorite in the rematch. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree that he is the heavy favorite, Jim, but you can't just say he's going to toast this guy because Kovalev made a lot of different adjustments that I have never seen him make in his career before. So both guys fought a wonderful, terrific fight. Um, I thought it was a beautiful fight, a great fight for us in boxing. Um, you know, I, I just, I see Ward having the advantage going into the rematch, but Kovalev's power is always something that has to be thought of. Therefore, you can't just give him and say, oh, he's going to win the fight. No, he still has to survive that danger zone of dealing with the crusher. Meanwhile, Roy, lots of boxing programming coming your way as we close out the year with a final flurry. Three live events in December, along with an all-new edition of the fight game. The in-ring action includes the return of the sport's best 140-pound fighter, Terrence Crawford, and the farewell fight of Bernard Hopkins' Hall of Fame career. Outside the ring, stick around following this telecast for an encore presentation of Real Sports and be on the lookout for three new editions of State of Play. The boxing career and life of Raimundo Beltran will be one of the featured topics in this documentary series from Peter Berg that examines how sport and society are inextricably connected. For a final rundown of the upcoming sports calendar and much more, log on to HBO.com. Now let's get ready for tonight's highly anticipated main event. The prospect of Vasily Lomachenko versus Nicholas Walters truly began to take shape in late 2014. Lomachenko captured a slice of the featherweight championship by dispatching undefeated Gary Russell, proving the Ukrainian was among the lower weight division's very best. Four months later, Walters took on highly regarded Nonito Donaire for a different featherweight belt. The birth of a featherweight star. The devastating sixth round TKO put Lomachenko and the entire boxing world on notice. A unification bout seemed likely for 2015. 
but Walters was stripped of his belt after failing to make the 126-pound limit for his fight against Miguel Mariaga. 127.4. Soon after beating Mariaga, Walters would move one division north to 130 pounds, while Lomachenko remained at featherweight and grew his reputation as one of the sport's top fighters. A phenomenal-looking performance by an extraordinary athlete. But the public's appetite for Lomachenko versus Walters never waned, and the fighters' interest in facing one another only intensified. Personally, I fight him at whatever way. Even at 140, I fight him at 140. An attempt to schedule the bout for this past April fell apart over Walters' purse demands, prompting Lomachenko to call out his preferred rival on Twitter. Last June, Lomachenko joined Walters in the 130-pound weight class and debuted with a sensational knockout of then champion Rocky Martinez. What a right hook. It just doesn't get much better than that. And the stage was set once again. Yeah, я очень рад, потому как я давно говорил о том, что если ты хочешь быть лучшим, ты должен боксировать с лучшими. This fight for me is definitely is a do I die situation. All the build up for Vasily Lomachenko versus Nicholas Walters gives way to the present. And two of boxing's best reach for greatness. A live look at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, nestled right in the middle of everything, alongside the Las Vegas Strip, and seen tonight of the fight between Lomachenko and Walters. They have a terrific little arena in this hotel, which is an ideal spot for a boxing match if you're not anticipating a crowd of 15 to 20,000 people, as was the case a week ago. And now we bring you into ringside, once again with HBO boxing analyst Max Kellerman. Max, we talked a lot going into last weekend about the perfect matchup it was between the big-time uh, puncher and the great all-around boxer. Now here's an even purer version of the same kind of matchup because Lomachenko is even more a pure boxer than Andre Ward, and Walters is even more a full-on puncher than Sergey Kovalev. So could it be an even greater fight? It's going to be tough to match the drama of Ward and Kovalev because of the early action where Ward is dropped, gets up, somehow claws his way back into the fight, and comes back to ultimately win against the guy where it looked like he could get dropped again at any moment. And the ending was controversial. Not a robbery, I don't think, but it was controversial. Tough to match that drama. But in terms of the action that this can produce, likely much less clinching, likely an even more crowd-pleasing fight. And Jim, this was the kind of matchup that when I was a kid, watching you call fights on HBO, these kind of fights made me a boxing fan. The best fighting the best. I cannot wait for round one. You're still young enough to make me bad. Be jealous, Max. Meanwhile, turning to our expert commentator, Roy Jones. Roy, the, the odds are shocking. Uh, the odds compute to something like that Lomachenko is an eight or nine to one favorite. And your first thought is nobody in the world should be that big a favorite over Nicholas Walters. But when we asked Walters about that yesterday when we met with him face to face, he said, oh yeah. He said, I know the odds and therefore I know I shouldn't even be thinking of a decision. That won't happen. I have to knock him out. Is he right? Well, I think he's right. And I think Sergey Kovalev thinks the same way right about now. So, I mean, you know, boxing is a sport that the judges have to make their opinions. Opinions has a lot to do with the outcome of fights. We all have different opinions about how it goes, but truth, truthfully, it comes down to the judges. Nicholas Walters is coming in with the right pair tonight. If you want to guarantee victory, the best way to guarantee a victory is to get the other guy out of here. He can do it. He has huge punching power with both hands. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Nicholas Walters against Vasily Lomachenko. You see the two-year age advantage for Lomachenko. They're equal in height at five feet, seven inches tall. A one-inch arm advantage, arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist for Nicholas Walters. He weighed in a half pound under the 130-pound limit, but has rehydrated up unofficially tonight to 136 and Lomachenko weighed in right at the 130 pound limit has put on exactly seven pounds according to our unofficial HBO scale to go into the ring with a one pound functional weight advantage. Nicholas Walters is a proud representative of his home, home nation of Jamaica. He actually lives and trains in Panama most of the year. He relocated there eight years ago to further his boxing career and has since begun a family in the Central American country. 
we paid Walters a visit in his adopted homeland to find out more. First, I came to Panama in about eight years ago. I was about 22 years old. The boxing in, in, in Panama is more active. In one gym in Panama, we'll have more boxers than the entire nation in Jamaica. A lot more guys to help you to get you to that level that you want to get to. Over here, the language barrier was Spanish, so I came over here, didn't even speak Spanish. It's very difficult, you know, even to learn, to learn a language. It took me about eight to nine months. After learning the language, then everything changes. Find yourself a girlfriend and everything, you, you started living the country, it started being more easier. For a year, I spent like eight to nine months in Panama, and I spent the rest of the year in, in Jamaica. Sometimes your profession take you to a different place, and you just have to make the adjustment. This is what I have to do to make it in life, so I have to do it. And Walters walking to the ring first, not recently accustomed to that because he held the title for a while and we lost the title uh, by making the scale one pound over the weight limit against Miguel Mariaga. He went back to being a non-title fighter and that's when he moved up to the 130 pound weight class and realizing that in order to make the fight he would have to go up to 130 also. Lomachenko kind of got the drop on Walters by moving up and getting a title fight against Roman Rocky Martinez and knocking Martinez out to earn a title in this weight class. So, Vasily Lomachenko is rapidly gaining admirers for his elite skill set. Carried him to two Olympic gold medals, two world titles in just seven professional fights. We traveled to Lomachenko's training camp in Oxnard, California to ask him about a particular display of skill and hand speed that's hard to see in real time, but he does it. Take a look. Ну, это отец мне подсказал, научил меня это делать. У нас были было очень много времени, чтобы это отработать дома. He's able to, with complete artistry and mastery, hit and not get hit. Lomachenko, spectacular. Ну, самое главное в этот момент не пропустить самому. Тем более, что если я это делаю, если против меня такая штука не пройдет, если это кому-то поможет, я буду рад. Только не моему сопернику. Главное, чтобы мой соперник против меня не использовал. Дальше, ну, это уже идет. Совершенствование, и я хочу, чтобы мое имя осталось в истории спорта. I did it all, Jim. I was a master of things like that. I learned those type of things from the great Roberto Duran, and I kept them in my bags, too. All right. So Lomachenko has those kinds of skills. How rare are they? They are very rare. You don't find many people with them. One in every 2,000, maybe so. And that's of the known fighters. And, of course, Lomachenko was taught those skills by his father, who has trained him, he says, virtually since he left the cradle. And, and began walking. That's the uh, first time he went to the gym. He believes he was, in fact, an infant. And his father has uh, developed quite a following among others in the sport, as Anatoly, Anatoly Lomachenko is clearly an outstanding trainer. Now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. Now, before we get started with this very special contest, this is a special night indeed, as this is promotion number 2000 for Hall of Fame promoter Bob Arum. For 50 years, he's brought us more fights than anyone in the sport. The challengers, champions, and contenders, it's a list of the who's who of boxing over the last half century. De La Hoya, Mayweather, Duran, Hagler, Hearns, Pacquiao, Big George Foreman, Smoke and Joe Frazier, and the greatest Muhammad Ali. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of HBO Sports, the Cosmopolitan, and boxing fans around the world, we salute the most prolific promoter in boxing history, AKA the Bob Father, Mr. Bob Arum. 
And now Bob Barum and his top rank incorporated are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Tecate, born bold. And sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Anthony A. Marnell III, Executive Director Bob Bennett, and the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, Supervisor Richard DeCure. The three judges scoring will be Adelaide Bird, Bert Clements, and Glenn Trowbridge, and in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Tony Weeks. And now, the officials are at ringside, and they are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. So for the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world, live on HBO Sports from the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas, Nevada, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green, yellow, and black. Official weight, 129, one half pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 26 victories, including 21 wins by knockout without a loss, and he has one draw. Tonight, he challenges for his second world title. He's the knockout artist from Montego Bay, Jamaica. Former featherweight champion of the world the undefeated Nicholas Axman Waters. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing multicolors and weighing in officially at 130 pounds. After 396 amateur victories with only one defeat and two Olympic gold medals, he now is a two-time world champion with a professional record of six victories and four KOs, only one defeat. Tommy Gasbada from Ackerman, Ukraine, the reigning and defending WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Vasil Haitek Lomachenko. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, gentlemen, you both received your instructions in your dressing room. Okay, right here is okay. Anything below that's low. Right here is okay. Anything below that's low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. All right. Only a special fighter and a special performance wins a matchup like this. What if, as was the case last week in Ward and Kovalev, they're both special tonight? <laughs> Referee Tony Weeks, who has gotten the lion's share of big fight assignments here in Las Vegas in recent years, did not handle the super fight last Saturday night, but is here to be in charge of Lomachenko against Walters. By the way, Walters has a draw, a blemish on his record. It wasn't really a draw. It was a terrible judge's decision in a fight clearly won by Walters. Lomachenko has a loss on his record, but there's a story behind that too, as he insisted on fighting for a world title in only his second professional fight and wound up in a matchup against the craftiest rule bender in the sport, Orlando Salido, and wound up losing an extremely close decision that a lot of people disputed. So both blemishes on the two records are questionable. And that's what you'd expect from fighters of this level of skill and this level of preparation. Lomachenko always wants to fight the best in his weight class, whoever that is, he doesn't care. Has, has told his representatives, his manager, his promoter, I want to fight the other belt holders. Barring that, give me the number one contender. He's not available number two. Number three, Walters is the best available opponent who we're getting with Lomachenko, and he's a top flight fighter in and around this weight division. 
Southpaw against conventional fighter. First round is often a, quote, feeling out round. Lomachenko has been pushing his jab out there, checking the distance between himself and Walters. Walters throwing a jab out there as well. Neither man has landed one of their more significant punches quite yet. Nicholas Walker, Walters is taking his time with his jab, trying to find uh, an opening for that big right hand. Uh, Lomachenko being very smart, taking his time, trying to figure out the length, the distance. One thing I, like, I have to say right away, though, is that Nicholas Walters, for any fighter that's been off for 300 plus days, does not show any ring rust at all. 343 days since his last fight, and a lot of that delay was brought about by his determination to get the best deal he could possibly get for this fight against Lomachenko. He knew he was going to fight him. He wanted to get paid. Nicholas Walters is a linear fighter, very forward-backwards. And um, Lomachenko is a fighter that fights in semicircles at angles and is the faster fighter and is a southpaw and is better defensively. Walters, the bigger puncher, needs to lay traps to catch Lomachenko on the way in, I think, in order to land a big punch. And Lomachenko just landed a pretty good left hand on Walters. If he does that again, it's going to get bad for him. That was a good right hook by Lomachenko. Lomachenko has begun to pound the range. Ah! Walters has done so, so in the last minute of round one, it was Lomachenko who began to establish his offense against Nicholas Walters. He's ready. He's ready for your punch. Fake the first attack, and then the second one is for real. Otherwise, keep your hands in their place. Keep going forward. Fill them out with the hand and then go forward. Round two begins. Vasily Lomachenko of Ukraine against Nicholas Walters of Jamaica. Best fight of the year in the 130 pound weight class. Saw at the end of the last round, Lomachenko's um, superior ability start to shine through. As I said, Walters has fight changing power, but I don't know if he can just go out and create that offense on Lomachenko. I think he's going to have to catch Lomachenko with something on the way in. That would be his best out. Walters has fight changing power, Lomachenko has fight controlling craft. <laughs> Now Lomachenko has begun to pepper Walters with tight, short punches, jab, quick left hands, getting just close enough to land, still making himself scarce when Walters tries to throw back. As good as Walters is, and he's not a guy that fighters around this weight division are rushing into the ring with, um, Lomachenko is a big favorite. Yeah, he's Five dead. and six to one in this fight, and that speaks to, you know, boxing insider's knowledge of his ability. Yeah, he's staying very close to the X man to try to neutralize that straight right hand. Doing a very good job of staying close. Sooner or later, though, oh. that was a good right hand. Oh, yes, it was. Sooner or later, if he lets Lomachenko continue to weave out to his left, he's going to bring a right hook from over there that's not going to be pretty. Who's he, Roy? Uh, Nicholas Walters. Walter. Talking about Walters. Right there. So he baited him into that shot. He saw it the first time, but he didn't take it. But since it was there, he came right behind it and followed and landed the straight left hand. That's what we call him high tech. Low and Chico, that is. Good jab by Nicholas Walters. Another good jab. Gets by in another good jab. So Walters has begun to find the range now. Just with the jab. 
Lomachenko hasn't, hasn't landed a big right hand yet. Yeah, Lomachenko does, doesn't mind the jab. He just doesn't want him to find the range with the straight right. Or the right uppercut. Good left hand again by Lomachenko. Another good left hand by Lomachenko. He's just out quicking Walters at this point. He's able to make quicker movements. He's more decisive about where he wants to go and when he wants to go there. He's getting the spots before Walters can deal with him. Getting outside of that right hand by stepping to his left, I mean, stepping to his right, which is away from Walters' right. December 10, Terrence Crawford, the pride of Omaha and universally recognized as the best 140-pound fighter in the world, takes on big-punching John Molina in front of his hometown fans. One week later, triple header action from the Los Angeles Forum featuring the final ring appearance of 51-year-old legend Bernard Hopkins. At least, he says so. Hopkins will be taking on Joe Smith, who in his last fight knocked out the highly regarded Andre Ponfara in the first round. So we know that Smith has punching power, and we know that Hopkins is a great bomb diffuser. as you watch him work. Generally, fighters as physically gifted as he is don't attain his kind of technical craft, as you would say, Jim. And in addition to that, he can crash. And he's a southpaw, and he's really good defensively. He is the total package. And Nicholas Walters would be smart to try to land that straight right hand to the body side. Good quick left hand inside by Lomachenko. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Here and they go. don't acquire the Lomachenko level craft usually because they don't have to. But Lomachenko has the skills of a guy who's not as talented as he is, but, but he is supremely talented. And when Lomachenko's going low to his outside, which is his right, and Nicholas Walters is staying straight up there in front of him, sooner or later that's going to be real dangerous for him. For Walters? Yes, because Lomachenko sees the right hook and he sees the left hand. I don't think I don't think Nicholas Walters realizes that he's in harm's way. Like right there, move he's making, he's constantly making him get used to seeing it, but not throwing it off of it. Eventually, he's going to do it one time, and it'll be a smashing hook that'll come from it. Walters has landed some uppercuts. That one was low in this fight when Lomachenko's jumping in a little. Walters getting a little impatient, it seems, too. And not focusing much on Lomachenko's body. As again, that was a good shot. Just as you said it, Jim, you must have woke the idea up from him. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that to have any chance against Vasily Lomachenko, you might want to focus on the body in the first stages of the fight. And set I, up something for later on. I agree with you 100%. So in this round, Walt finally throws body shots. Still missing with the right hand upstairs. Lomachenko, we see that great footwork. Constantly able to move side to side and step around Nicholas Walters. He's a step around fighter of the highest order. Yeah, the other thing about Lomachenko, I mentioned that level of athletic ability combined with that little level of craft, but he applies the craft aggressively, particular and, and in a busy style, particularly for a good defensive fighter. Makes guys keep their hands at home a lot with the small or the light offense. Then once he gets settled at home, he brings a bomb. Lomachenko, that oh, hands is. Free, hands free, don't hold. Hands free. Stop, stop, stop. Let him go. Let him go. More punch combination for Lomachenko. After Walters had the now familiar experience of missing the right hand. Three. Don't do it too hard. You don't have to try too hard. 
Everything's good. Keep peppering him. You see, he's waiting for you. Front, front straight left, back straight. He's looking for, he's aiming for a counter. Several voices now in Nicholas Walter's corner. Usually we'll see not how that works out for him. Usually, usually it's not a good idea. Yeah, that, and also usually a sign that a lot of people in the corner feel they need to give you advice because you're not doing well. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Vasily Lomachenko. You, you know, Jim, he's boxing beautifully, I got to tell you. And in round three, he started throwing combinations. The rounds one and two, it was, you know, is the right jab and a straight left. The round three, he started throwing really nice combinations. I got to tell you something, though. Nicholas Walter should go out there and punch. That, now, watch. Every time Lomachenko throws that right jab, he covers up. If I were Nicholas Walters, I would be punching like a madman, throwing shots, jumping right on Lomachenko. Lomachenko, but he's not. He's covering up, and that's the reason why Lomachenko's winning the fight. Landing more punches with that right jab. Walter's covering up too much. Three to nothing, Lomachenko. A couple things about that. Harold brings up some interesting points. One, Lomachenko establishes superior position. You see the right foot outside of Walter's left foot. So Walter's, especially when he throws the right no, no, hand, no, no, has to no. cross over his entire Don't body. Do that. Don't do that miss the target or else hit it very lightly while Lomachenko's in a much better position to counter. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I do agree that Walters should punch more because his best chance is to catch Lomachenko in an exchange. Maybe not win most of the exchanges, but land something big in an exchange. But Walters is not exactly a high-volume seek-and-destroy guy. He's a boxer puncher. He just went at it with a good hook. And Lomachenko countered the hook with two big punches, so that also would make him, make him slow down and not be so aggressive. I think Lomachenko's offense has neutralized or made a uh, lack of for Nicholas Walters to be very offensive in this fight. He yeah, I think uh, Lomachenko's footwork has something to do with that, too. Yeah. Fighters don't like to miss punches. So Harold Letterman may say, well, Walters should throw more. But if Walters throws more and misses the punches, he's not going to want to keep doing it. Especially when you have a guy there who will discipline you for your misses. And that's what he's doing. A good body shot by Lomachenko. It's just the quickness and decisiveness of Lomachenko. The way he seems to know exactly what he wants to do from moment to moment. He's got the other fighter on the defensive, even when he's not trying to land big. And, and the, vari the variation of oh, speed oh, and, oh, and oh, power on his punches. Tap, tap, lulls the opponent to sleep, <laughs> and then something hard. Can put him hook by, Good, more, Good hook by the X man Stop, 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 stop. Come on, both of you, keep it clean. Here we go. Everything Lomachenko does is predicated on position in the ring. He so easily establishes position stop, with his stop, footwork. Watch the back of there. There we go. Gets inside of Nicholas Walters' long arms. Lands punches on the inside. Makes Walters miss over the top. Hit him in the stomach, then hit him in the head. First the stomach, then the head. Understand? Body head. The front is working. Hit him in the stomach, then the head. Body head. CompuBox numbers through the first five rounds find Lomachenko landing 55 out of 234, Walters 26 out of 153. So Lomachenko with a 35 to 15 edge and landed punches in the last couple of rounds is piling up CompuBox numbers early against Nicholas Walters. At the beginning of the fight between rounds, 
Walters was listening to his Panamanian trainer, Celso Chavez. For the last couple of rounds, increasingly he's been looking at his father, Job Walters, and listening to what he has to say. But if you're searching for the right voice in the corner, it means you haven't found things working the way you wanted stop, them stop, to stop, stop, stop. inside the ring. You no. Know, Lomachenko is doing to Walters what he did to Gary Russell Jr. Gary Russell Jr. is a special talent. And Lomachenko just took him to school, virtually shut him out. And, and Nicholas Walters is a top flight fighter in the lower weight classes. The draw was bogus. He's undefeated, really. Knocked out Donaire. Um, had established himself as a fighter that fight fans want to see and think very highly of on the kind of outskirts, if you know, if not actually in the top 10 pound for pound. And Lomachenko, as he did to Gary Russell Jr., is just turning it into a boxing lesson. It's not quite to the point where you would say that Lomachenko is toying with him, but he's able to do what he wants to do. Well, he's almost toying with him. He move, moves around him like that to a point to where Nicholas Walters can do no good, uh, no harm to him at all. So he's doing pretty much whatever he wants to do at will. And that is somewhat toying with the guy until you catch him with a clean shot. <laughs> Nicholas Walters is trying to put the punches on Lomachenko, and Lomachenko is not showing him a steel target or an open target. Therefore, he is less likely to throw punches because he doesn't see anything. And, and for a good defensive stop, boxer, stop, stop. Lomachenko takes chances. You know, Walter's only shot, it looks like, is to catch him with something big. And it would, it would seem as though Lomachenko's giving him some opportunity by the pace that he's working at, the way he's inside of Walter's punching range. But his defense is so sharp. He has such mastery over distance that I don't see a lot of opportunity for Walter. You heard the thudding body shot by Lomachenko there as he pounded the left into Walter's rib cage. Stop, I got you. Yeah. Walter's looking for an opening instead of just punching until he finds an opening. With Lomachenko, he punches until he finds an opening. Lomachenko dropping his hands. I mean, how many fighters would drop their hands in front of Nicholas Walters? In front of the axe man. It's amazing to watch what this man can do. Immediately following tonight's live boxing, stick around for real sports among the stories. A look at why the youngest football players in this country are often the least protected from catastrophic injury and death. December 14, the fight game returns. Join me, Max Kellerman, Bernard Hopkins, and Melissa Stark for one-of-a-kind reporting and analysis of the biggest issues in boxing. <laughs> Not a happy corner right now as Nicholas Walters searches for answers and tries to figure out how he can solve the puzzle of Vasily Lomachenko. You know, Max, because he's a southpaw and because he's demonstrably a great defender, I've recently heard people comparing Lomachenko to Pernell Whitaker. And Sweet Pea was one of the greatest fighters we ever covered. But Whitaker wasn't nearly as busy an offensive fighter as Vasily Lomachenko. He was a more careful defensive fighter and a um, and not nearly as uh, dynamic an offensive fighter. But Pernell's defense is the reason that in his prime, he, no one really could touch him. The easiest thing to prediction to make was Pernell win 12. Didn't matter who he was fighting. Stop, stop, stop. Um, no, no. Occasionally, he was ripped yeah, off by the judges. Yeah, yeah. Keep your head up. You both, you can't push his head down. Let's go. Roy, it looks to me as though... Uh, willing to push it a little bit more and therefore maybe be more vulnerable, but be more exciting offensively. I'm wondering, based on what I've seen in the last couple of rounds, Roy, if Nicholas Walters is starting to think he's got a better chance of landing a big left hook than of landing a straight right hand. Yeah, I think he does because uh, Lomachenko is taking the right hand away completely by stepping around to Nicholas's left. So Nicholas is thinking now the right hand can't get there, so I should try to land the left as he's stepping to my left side. Maybe I can run him into it. But that's what's 
dangerous is because when he steps around there, he runs you into stuff before you get a chance to try to run him into something. So it's a very tough task for Nicholas Walters right now. Good body. Left talk to the body. That's a good, a good choice and a weapon that could help him down the stretch, and that sets up a chance to land the right hand. Lomachenko in this round has started to land some combinations upstairs um, against a responsible defensive fighter as though he's hitting the floor to ceiling bag, Roy. Yeah, that's him. That's how he does it. That's why they call him high tech, Max. He makes guys like that. I told you that shot was going to come soon because he's over on, on that left side and Nicholas is not really prepared thinking that he's too far away and just then he cashed in on it. Good body shot by Nicholas. Yeah, he's landed some big body shots this he's round. He's making some really good choices as Nicholas Walters in this round, landing his left hook to the body several times. It's a smart choice on his part, but he's landing one punch at a time. And that, Whereas that, Lomachenko is landing combination. And that one punch at a time is never going to work on Lomachenko because he's usually way too slick for that. No. Lomachenko almost landed an uppercut and now chops away with a combination. Part of a slick boxer, and Lomachenko is among other things a slick boxer, creating excitement with fans um, is the crowd reaction. Fighting in front of a small audience here, there's not the same kind of energy that kind of emphasizes the amazing things Lomachenko is doing and consequently, this fight so far is less than exciting because it's so one-sided. If this was a huge kind of pay-per-view extravaganza, what Lomachenko is doing would be highlighted by the fact that he's doing it against this quality fighter. Okay, everything's good. Keep, keep working more. Hit him and move. Stick and move. Hit him, his, his, his attack's getting weaker. Keep going with the right. Relax. Well, the copy box graphic showed you that Vasily Lomachenko has landed more punches than Nicholas Walters in each one of the first six rounds of the fight. So we're halfway through the scheduled 12 rounds. Harold, how do you have it through six? I gotta agree with the copy box guys. Six to nothing. 60 to 54, Vasily Lomachenko. Jim, what a beautiful boxing job. I, I mean, he is really special. You know, the movement, the hand speed, uh, the right jabs, the right hooks, the straight left hands. He's boxing beautifully. I, I tell you, if, if there were more old guys like me around, you'd compare him to Willie Pep because he's that kind of a boxer. Absolutely beautiful boxing job for six rounds. Six to nothing, Vasily Lomachenko. Was Pep as aggressive and varied an oh, offensive oh, fighter oh, as he oh, is? No question, Jim. Willie Pep was special. Willie Pep was quick. The only difference was, was that Willie Pep was right-handed. Well, there's more. Quick. Willie Pep couldn't crack, and Lomachenko well, can punch. He wasn't a big puncher, but a beautiful boxer. Yes, he does have a lot of Pep in him. Uh, but a better puncher. He has a lot of Purnell in him, but maybe more of a combination puncher. Even as Purnell dominated, a lot of times it was ones and one twos. Yeah, he's just busier than Purnell. What I need is we have a interpreter in Lomachenko's corner to hear what he's saying, but I need me a damn interpreter for Nicholas Walters' corner because I can't understand nothing that they're telling him. Well, and our our great Spanish interpreter Jerry Olaya has the weekend off for very valid reasons so we're guessing good body shot partially blocked by walters and i think you can tell by the number of people who are trying to talk at the same time in walters corner that there's a mixed message oh this shot lomachenko finding the target more and more stop stop stop, stop. here we go here we go turn around one minute to go in the seventh now he's getting comfortable, Lomachenko is. He's starting to figure Walters out. He's not afraid of the power no more because he knows how it feels. And now he's pressing his attack, trying to get him out of there. I wonder if this level of fearlessness is a good idea against a guy who can punch like Walters. 
Walters badly off balance good there. Hook Gets in a good left hook. Still missing with the right hand. He's taking his best weapon away from him. Kind of the way we saw Nonito, uh, uh, Regan Dow take Nonito's left hook away. Yes. He's taking uh, Nicholas Walters' straight right hand away. Like that right there. Oh, my God. I mean, he's toying with oh, Nicholas is, Walters. This is amazing. What, uh, what's going to be really funny is the next time Walters is in with a top fighter and scores a knockout. Right. And we'll remember how good he really is. Because this is indeed becoming toyage. I told you that three rounds ago. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you were right. Lomachenko waving at Walters with his glove as he walks back to his corner. Don't let him return a punch. We talked about this. Keep attacking him. Continue it. He's on his back foot. Keep going. They're stopping the fight. That's astonishing. Nicholas Walters and his corner apparently making a decision that there just wasn't any way. It wasn't. There wasn't, but that is disappointing end to a fight. A fighter of Walter's caliber, even if he's being toyed with, unless there's a physical injury, given his punching power, you would think that a champion, a, a one-time champion, would want to try everything he could to win the fight. But I think sitting here, it was pretty obvious the athletic competition was over, and it was already decided Lomachenko was superior. The tradition in America, in North American boxing is uh, a, a champion would not stop fighting at that moment. Are you shocked, Roy? I'm no, shocked. No, I'm not, because it's similar to Roberto Duran in the No Mind situation. When you're in the ring with a guy, you realize he's not going to give you nothing that you want that night. It's very difficult to stay there, and you know you're totally at his mercy. He's not going to play your game. You have no chance of winning. The only thing you have a chance of doing is being knocked out embarrassingly. embarrassingly. So for me, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Well, apparently, Walters wanted to bring an end to the embarrassment. We now have a chance to listen to the conversation that took place between Walters and referee Tony Weeks. Let's hear it. Trainer Celso Chavez even said no mas. Yeah, I you told know, you. Just as you said, relative to Roberto Duran against Ray Leonard, the same phrase that we heard in New Orleans back in the 1980s, we hear it again here, as Nicholas Walters' trainer says to Tony Weeks, no mas, and no mas it is. Now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time comes at the end of round seven, as the challenger informs referee Tony Weeks, he is unable to continue. The winner by TKO victory and still WBO super featherweight champion of the world, Vasil Hightech Lomachenko! Well, in a moment, we'll look at CompuBox numbers in a fight in which the margin of competition grew a little bit in every round. It looked close enough in the first round, although we could see that Walters was going to have trouble landing his right hand. But at the end of the day, Olemachenko lands 114 to 49, more than doubling Walters. Lands or, th or throws 184 more punches than Walters and lands at a higher connect percentage. The power punch numbers will be even more one-sided. Lomachenko more than doubling Walters in power punches, landing at a 39% percentage. Only 28% for Walters, who really couldn't find anything with his right hand, which is his big weapon. He understood that he could get in left hooks and landed some to the body. But at the end of the day, Lomachenko was doing basically everything he wanted to do. 
including landing three and four punch combinations repeatedly, and more so with each passing round as the rounds went by. So Nicholas Walters checks out, and here's Max Kellerman with the winner. Wow. Wow. That was, that was impressive stuff. You just made uh, an undefeated top fighter in the weight division quit. He literally said, no mas. How did you do it? Отменный бой. Вы только что сделали так, что человек, который ни разу не проиграл, сказал, больше не могу. Как там, как там сделали? Я не знаю, я снимаю шляпу перед Волтасом. Он действительно очень сильный боец, крепкий. Но я думаю, что э, дело сделал простой год. Он год стоял, не боксировал. Я думаю, что из-за этого он остановился. Walters is a good fighter. He's really strong. But I think he just stood there in one place, which made it easy for me to win. Walters is a good fighter, and he is strong. Gary Russell Jr. is a really good fighter, and he's really fast. And these guys have no chance against you. Who does? Who do you look, when you look out there, who do you see as your most likely rival? Walters is strong. Russell was very fast. But they didn't have anything to do against him. Кто может что-нибудь сделать? Кого вы видите, что какой я, боец может? Не знаю, я пока не хотел бы делать заявление. Единственное, что я повторюсь, я говорил уже, что бокс это не только скорость отдельно, это не только сила отдельно. Ты должен быть боксером, который обладает и высоким IQ, и большой функциональной подготовкой, и физической подготовкой, и скоростной. Ты должен объединить все в одно. Uh, as I said before, it's not about being just strong or being just fast. A lot of things take place. Uh, you have to train, you have to be highly functional in the ring. So all those things are a combination of what makes me good. So who do you want? Who's the fighter out there that you think you target next? Uh, I want Vargas. <laughs> What's the goal here for you quickly before we turn to the axe man? What's the goal for you? What do you want to accomplish in boxing? What's your goal in boxing? My goal in boxing is to be number one pound for pound. My goal is to be number one pound for pound. Looks like you're on your way. Thank you. Terrific performance. Thank you. Good fight, man. Good fight. Very good fight. Nicholas, what happened? Una. One here without fighting. Unanio Simpeliame. One almost a year without, without fighting in the ring, right? My last fight was with, with um, Sosa, right? So I, I went up, I went up in weight. When, when I take down the weight, he was more, he was more, he was more active. So you, if you watch the fight, you see him, he has been scoring more than I do. I'm throwing my, my, my good shots, but they're not, they're, they're not connecting. He's connecting more clearly than I am touching him. You understand? So, so, and in the last round, in the last round, he started catching me more, more and more. You understand? So, you know, he's just, I, I don't want to take away from him. He's a good fighter. I love you guys. I love you guys. I think the reaction from the crowd, even though it did seem to us ringside that the athletic competition was over, that he proved he was better, um, and it might seem reasonable to some who don't know boxing culture to think, well, then it's okay to stop fighting. In, in the biggest traditions in boxing, proud champions and top fighters don't just say no mas in a situation like that. They continue to try to fight. What do you think about that as a top undefeated fighter who was losing a fight but didn't appear to be badly hurt at the moment, quitting? What do you think about that? It wasn't, it wasn't, about, it wasn't, it wasn't about quitting, right? If you, look, if you look at the last round, he caught me with some pretty good shot. I was holding on just to survive the round. You know, it, was, it, was, it would be stupid to come out after, after, after the, the, the last round. So you were hurt in the previous round? Yeah, yeah of course. He, he caught me with some good shot. But you have to understand, you guys gave me fight, one fight per year. You know, he's active. He's fighting, he's fighting more active than me. You know, so that's it. Thank you, Nicholas. Jim? All right, so the crowd doesn't like it, what they're hearing from Nicholas Walters, but we go forward in discussing Vasily Lomachenko. And Roy Jones, because he is promoted by top rank on that particular roster of potential opponents. Bob Arum this past week began mentioning the possibility of Lomachenko fighting Manny Pacquiao. At this moment, there's about a 15-pound weight gap there. 
But by, uh, Aram says that could be bridged. There could be a catch weight. He could fight Pacquiao. Others discuss the possibility of uh, Terrence Crawford. There's a 10-pound weight distance between himself and Terrence Crawford. He mentions Francisco Vargas, who is a 130-pound fighter who I believe would have no chance against him, even though he's tremendously entertaining. Great thing to uh, watch. Could you see Lomachenko within the foreseeable future fighting somebody like Pacquiao or Crawford? Yeah, I can see him fighting Pacquiao for sure. Um, the reason I can see him fighting Pacquiao is because Pacquiao already went up as high as he was going to go. Now he's on a decline as far as coming back down, even in weight. He speaks about going back to 140 all the time now. So knowing that Pacquiao came from 112, it would probably be easier for him to come down and meet at a 135, 136, so to say, than anybody else. Terrence Crawford is on, a, on his way up the ladder. He's not descending, he's ascending. He's going up to 140, maybe 147. So I don't see that fight really happening. And I think Terrence Crawford is a much bigger specimen as far as the frame goes. He could have never turned pro and fought at 112. So I think the Pacquiao fight is much more doable and one that I would love to see. Manny Pacquiao versus this man, Vasily Lomachenko, let's say at 140. Who's favorite? Quick tech versus high tech. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, Roy. Max Kellerman joins us. Max, he wants to be pound for pound number one. Any yeah. reason to believe he can't be pound for pound number one? No, I think he will be. I mean, in reality, he hasn't proven it yet. But uh, if you if you ask me my honest opinion, who do I actually think is the best fighter in boxing right now? I think it's Lomachenko. Not proven it. Can't put him pound for pound number one yet based on the resume. I suspect he's the best fighter in boxing. Um, this was a disappointing fight. It was a disappointing ending. Uh, Nicholas Walters made a rational choice that a rational human being would make. But in boxing culture, whether it's a good tradition or a bad tradition, it is the tradition that top fighters want to go out on their shield. And even though the athletic competition had been decided, Nicholas Walters quitting in the way he did um, is a disappointing end to this fight. But it speaks to the kind of fighter Lomachenko is that he can take really good fighters and make them look ordinary and even make them want to quit. It's going to take a special kind of fighter to beat this Lomachenko. And speaking of that, you mentioned his name, Jim. I like to ask fighters in our fighter meetings the night before the fight, who do you see out there, the special ones like Lomachenko, who do you see out there that's like you? Who else is a special kind of fighter in or around your weight division? And I asked that of Lomachenko, and he said Terrence Crawford, and I asked that of Terrence Crawford, and he said Lomachenko. Real recognize real. Terrence Crawford fights in a couple of weeks. All right. So one week ago here in Las Vegas, we brought together two of the top five pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, and the belief was that they would produce a great fight, and maybe the winner of that fight would now be seen as the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. It was a great fight. It is not clear at this moment that the winner of Kovalev Ward is going to be seen for this moment right now as the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport, though, of course, Andre Ward will continue to pursue that with passion and dedication. It's been his goal for a long time. But now, a week later, we put together two fighters in what we expected to be a fairly equal prize fight, and it becomes a wipeout. Because as Max Kellerman says, in his view, there's no question who ultimately is going to rise to become the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Maybe you saw him last week, but more likely, it appears, you saw him tonight. Vasily Lomachenko with a stunning and almost indescribably great performance against a top opponent in Nicholas Walters leaves us scratching our heads and thinking, who exactly could fight him? at his level. Thanks very much for being with us on this edition of HBO's World Championship Boxing. Immediately following this telecast, stick around for real sports and a look at why the youngest football players in this country are often the least protected from catastrophic injury and death. Lots of boxing programming coming your way as we close out the year with a final flurry. Three live events in December, along with an all-new edition of The Fight Game. The in-ring action includes the return of the sport's best 140-pound fighter, Terrence Crawford, and the farewell fight of Bernard Hopkins' Hall of Fame career. Outside the ring, tune in for three new editions of State of Play. 
The boxing career and life of Raimundo Beltran will be one of the featured topics in this documentary series from Peter Berg that examines how sport and society are inextricably connected. For a full rundown of the upcoming sports calendar and much more, log on to HBO.com. And now for our entire crew, thanks for being with us for this edition of World Championship Boxing.